I have to try to share with you where I find hope. And more importantly, once you've seized on that hope, what we all have to do, what our job is now post Copenhagen. We need to do it because we need to respect ourselves and, and, and pick up our share of the load. But we also need to do it because if we get out of the way, good things can happen. We were one of the major obstacles in Copenhagen. You know. Now what we have to do is change the political climate in Canada so that the climate issue cannot be ignored. There are people, and there were at Copenhagen, who talk about Canada as a climate rogue state. And among the industrialized countries, I'd say that's a fair comment. We're facing a window that is closing, the window of opportunity to avoid runaway global warming and to avoid the worst outcomes of climate change. You know, we can do this. It's not, it's not beyond our reach. The technologies to replace the fossil fuels are there. You don't have to develop them, pilot them, scale them up. They're on the shelf, ready to go. Maybe there's others that will be better later on, but we could do it with what we've got now. It won't break the bank. International cooperation is currently available. It is a relatively peaceful, historically very peaceful world. But if you leave it too long, that peaceful world slips out of your grasp. And then you don't do the deal. And if you don't do the deal, you go into the dark. What we need is hope with its next of kin courage to say we will in Canada be the kind of people who make our government do the right thing, kicking and screaming, by God, we will not allow the G20 summit to leave this country without a discussion on climate and the workings that will make a deal in Cancun possible. Thank you.